Welcome back to my channel. My name is Robin. I garden in Northwest uh, Connecticut in Zone 6. Today I'm on a hunt for some hellebores and I'm going to an expert. Um, in Northwest Connecticut, one of the really nicest nurseries in the area is the Falls Village Flower, Shop, uh, Flower Farm, Falls Village Flower Farm, owned by Tom Scott. And today we're going to go talk about hellebores, which really are one of the highlights of the winter garden. Hellebores are such an easy plant. I don't know why I've never put them in my garden. Um, they bloom in the winter, which is a time when there's nothing else going on. So let's go see what Tom has to offer and let's uh, get some great advice for him on these really easy care, easy growing plants. Um, so come with me and let's put a spotlight on hellebores. So here I am at Falls Village Flower Farm, one of my favorite nurseries, um, and we're going to talk to Tom Scott today, um, and he's going to talk to us about hellebores. So I thought we would do a spotlight on hellebores, why your garden has to have them, and uh, let's uh, let's get going. Okay, great. Uh, Robin, thank you. Um, yes, hellebores are a little known perennial of the ornamental garden. They uh, originate native to uh, Southern and Central Europe. Um, they, they like to be uh, in the, most of them like to be in the sh shady garden and uh, moderate uh, water. Uh, they, they bloom anytime between uh, November through March. So you've got basically three different uh, cultivars or, or species, I'm sorry. Uh, the first one that blooms is your Niger, which is also known as your Christmas rose. All right, the hellebores niger. Uh, then you uh, go into January, February with the snow roses. <clears throat> the snow roses are a um, hybrid between the niger and other species uh, from the Himalayas. Okay. Then you got the uh, the most widely known uh, hellebore, uh, the orientalis, which is also known as the Lenten rose because it blooms during um, the time of Lent. Um, in March or April, depending on the weather. Um, I say depending on the weather because most gardening questions start off with, well, it depends. Absolutely. <laughs> it <laughs> Especially depends. Especially this year, oh my gosh. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, envir environmental conditions dictates what, what plants do. So, uh, yeah, the orientalises, the Lenten rose, uh, they bloom, uh, like I say, March, March, April. Um, now, uh, a lot of people will say, oh, does is the flower point down, point up? Uh, most of the orientalises do point down, um, but they are still worth the, the effort because they got beautiful colors. The orientalises has the, the widest range of colors, um, anywhere from white to pink to yellow to purple, um, different spot um, formations. Um, the the Christmas rose. Go ahead. Yeah, I've seen some that look like they're almost black too. Are those yes. the orientalis? Oh, those are the orientalis. Got it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, the Niger uh, Christmas rose is strictly white. Um, and then the snow roses, uh, they're mostly white. Um, they have gotten some some a light red into them, um, some rose colors into them, um, but they're mostly white too. What zone are they? Uh, they're zone four to, I believe, eight. Okay. Uh, there's a big grower down, I believe, in Georgia. So if them. the um, if you're in a warmer zone, uh, can they take more sun? Uh, no, just the okay. opposite. If they're oh. not down in Georgia, okay. uh, there is strictly oh. Oh, right. strictly opposite. shade. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Yep. Sorry. Um, up here in the north, further north you go, um, they will take a little more sun. Perfect. Right. Okay. Uh, the snow, ro especially the snow roses. The snow roses will tolerate more sun uh, than the nigers or the orientalises. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Now, uh, when it comes to the uh, cultivation of, of hellebores, which is the care, uh, they again mostly shade. Um, water, you don't want them too wet um, or, or too dry. They're sort of in between. Uh, they will tolerate um, both ends of that, that spectrum. I do have one hellebore garden that faces directly west, west, um, and it gets full western sun. In fact, the last two years, they uh, come like August, they have been flat as pancakes, dried right out with that western sun and, and the dryness, as you all know, we've had quite a little dry right. spell here. Um, but they recuperated very well once the um, fall rains come. 
um, and they do just well. Now, uh, the rule of thumb for hellebore orientalises is to cut back the old leaves um, in the springtime already. Three years ago, I decided I was going to cut mine back out in late, late autumn. Uh, the reason I do that is because come springtime, the flowers do come up rather early. Um, so it makes it difficult to not do any damages to those flower buds while you are cutting off the old, old, old leaves. And also, if you get a real good snow, snow with snow. Right, what snow? <laughs> what snow? We have so, had no snow you know, here. <laughs> so if you get a really heavy snowfall right. and it, it damps down the, the, the evergreen leaves, um, it, it makes it harder. They get mushy and whatever. And I, I've done that for the last three years, cutting them back in the, in the uh, autumn. And they, they don't mind one bit. So does it help to um, in the early spring or late winter now to get some of the, try to get some of the leaves off of them too? So uh, the, the, the flowers actually can yes. shine? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Oh, totally. Right, like right now, since there is no snow cover, yeah. yeah, you can get right out there in those gardens and, and cut back the old leaves. So um, I have a question for you. Sure. <laughs> Why are hellebores so expensive? <laughs> okay. Uh, hellebores are tricky to propagate. Um, the, the root systems really are tender. They don't like to be touched too, too heavily, uh, too aggressively. Um, and they also take um, a long time to get to seed, okay? Or to flower, I'm sorry. Right. From, from seed to flower, it, it's anywhere from, from three to seven years. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Um, <clears throat> later on, we can possibly maybe get um, a shot of um, some young seedlings in, in the gardens here yeah. uh, to show you, you know, how big they are when they're like only two or three years old. Very cool. Yep. Let's, let's go do that. Okay. Okay. So now we have some seedlings of the Helleborus orientalis. That's these guys here. Um, and these here are two years old. Already. So you can see how small they are. And that, that's two years old. Wow. That's a lot of work. That, well, yeah. It is. It's a lot of work for you guys to, um, to yep. propagate. This. Come this spring um, is when we'll be uh, going through our hellebore gardens and, and digging up these little seedlings and, and potting them up. And from there, it'll take us probably another three years to get something that will be in the flowering, flowering age. So at this time of the year, we're going to just clean up this old foliage, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. So. Oh. Alrighty. Um, so Robin has asked me to um, let you know what we do here at the nursery. Uh, we grow and propagate mostly herbaceous perennials. Um, those are your irises, your rutabecchias, uh, kringoshomas, uh, anything that grows up and then um, dies back down the ground. And, um, it, is, it doesn't have a woody structure. Uh, we do a few woodies, um, lilacs, hydrangea, panicoladas, and, and, and a few... Um, um, Ilexes, whatever. So anyways, um, again, we grow and propagate everything we sell. We, we don't <clears throat> buy in ready for sale plants. Uh, and I, I believe that's basically why uh, our perennials are, are really vigorous and, and hardy because they're adapted to, to this zone. They start off very young here. Uh, we don't sell anything until it's developed a really good crown uh, and root system. Um, most of my help is always teasing me that I'm always pulling the plants out of the box because I'm taking a look at um, their root systems. Uh, you know the old saying, you got to get to the root with the problem, and that's where <laughs> it comes from. <laughs> you buy a plant and it doesn't right. do very well, it's probably because it didn't have a root system to it. Right. Already. Um, <clears throat> this area here is our potting shed. This is where all the magic happens. Uh, we, we get in um, young plants, uh, pot them up. And then we grow them up for a year or so before we do sell them. <clears throat> we do all our propagating here. Most of our propagating is by divisions. Uh, we'll take uh, a pot stocks and, and uh, use those for, for dividing. We'll, we'll also dig out of our display gardens once plants get too big. Um, dig them up, um, divide them up, and then replant them back into the, into the display gardens and then pot up the rest of them. When did you when did you become the owner of Falls Village Flower Farm? Uh, Falls Village Flower Farm was um, started back in '96, so we've been here 28 years. Wow. Oh. Um, we also uh, propagate by seed. 
Um, this, this plastic area back here is a heated area where we do some seedings and also um, cuttings. We do dapple in a few cuttings. And over here, um, we have uh, the nursery. Um, it is set up so that we have the um, retail area, which is out in front. And then in the back here towards the potting area uh, is our uh, growing area, which is the actual nursery part of a farm. So yeah. do you have um, plants covered? Uh, yeah. All everything. these all these white coverings is all our plant stocks ah. that we that we have. So one of the things we were just talking about is voles and mice and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So you battle with that too. Huh? Oh, you wouldn't believe the battle we have with voles <laughs> and mice. Uh, they are voracious eaters. Uh, in fact, our very first year, we didn't think about the rodents and we lost a third of our crop. Oh my God. But when we uncovered all this uh, white plastic in the springtime, it looked like they had a big orgy, man. I mean, it's just uh, fruit roots and, and soil just oh. scattered all over the place. Now I don't feel so bad. No, no, we've got it down. Now, I've got about 40 mouse traps set um, underneath this white plastic along, along the edges. Um, they're in little boxes to protect the mouse trap. And um, yeah, I catch any, at the very beginning, in the fall, when we're putting them away for the winter, we'll catch anywhere from six, six to eight mice a year, uh, a week. I'm sorry. Oh wow! Yep. Uh, does that help with the voles at all? Um, voles. Um, does it catch them? I do catch voles, but I'm not concerned about the voles. Got it. Um, it's, the um, mice are worse. Um, oh, mole. No, the vi um I'm sorry, voles. Yes. Yeah. The voles are the worst. Yeah. Yeah, they're like a mouse on steroids. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought you said moles. <laughs> yeah. So just to give you an idea what it, what it looks like underneath here. Um, this is our one oh, of our wow. stocks of, of hellebores. Okay, so a gardener could go crazy here for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome. But, um, Ooh, thanks for the sneak peek. <laughs> yep. That's, well, um, one of the reasons for insulating the, the, uh, the plants is they are in pots, so they do have to be protected from that freeze, uh, freeze and warm up cycle. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of the insulation is to uh, keep them cold. It's not to keep them warm, right? You want them to get cold and stay cold. Stay cold. Yep. Otherwise they come out of dormancy. So one of the things that I did learn about hellebores is you want to wear gloves because they actually can be astringent, so they can actually irritate you. They're evergreen. They do prefer the shade. Uh, zones four through nine for the most part. The flowers emerge in the spring before the leaves do. So this is a good time, early spring or late winter, to go clean up the dead leaves. You can do it in the fall, like Tom said, though. Um, so when the flowers emerge, they actually, you know, aren't impeded by lots of dead growth and you don't by accident cut off new flowers. They are resistant to deers and voles, thank God for little things. Plant them in well-drained soil, fertile. Um, and they can tolerate poor soil, but they might not perform quite as well. One of the great things about a nursery like Falls Village Flower Farm is that the plants are actually grown and propagated outdoors, so they're really hardy and healthy. So if you live in this area, please take a, uh, time to go up to visit um, sometime this spring and see what they have, because they have a lot of great stock and a lot of different plants. One of the things you want to do when you're buying hellebores, especially, is buy them when they're blooming so you can see what variety is going to look like and is that something you want in your garden. So a couple other tips. Be careful not to plant the hellebores too deep. Make sure the crown of the plant is just slightly buried beneath the soil. So I'm going to hold mine here now till March and then I'll get them in the ground. They look great with things like bleeding hearts and that kind of stuff. Um, they are perennial. They are uh, poisonous to both humans and pets. So be careful if you have animals. They can actually self-sow. So some of the new exciting trends, like Tom mentioned, um, there's some really unusual colors that are coming out, some increased um, plant heights, 
outward facing blooms and some exotic patterns like speckling and veining and picotty edges. So again, I really want to thank Tom Scott for taking the time to talk to us today. Um, so when I got back to my uh, house, I want to show you what I got. So I got three hellebores called Frost Kiss Moon Dance. It's a white flower with a little pink tint there. And um, it blooms from any time from November to February, depending on the, the weather. Gets like 24 inches high, part shade to shade. Um, these two, whoops, these two were grown outside. And this one is inside. So I'm going to bring this guy in until um, the ground is uh, nice and soft. So probably March. And then I'm going to cut the flowers off and I'm going to plant all these. So the other two are going to go in my unheated hoop house for right now, and they'll be totally fine there. So then I'm going to put them down where I have the, um, uh, the tulips. Hellebores are great because they really fill in a space where nothing is blooming. And, you know, they come up at a time when their flowers are so scarce everywhere else. And we haven't gotten to the daffodils and the crocus and all that kind of stuff yet, especially here in New England. So just cut back that old foliage, and if you're interested in some hellebores and you live near here, give Tom a call at Falls Village Flower Farm. My thanks again to Tom Scott at Falls Village Flower Farm for giving us a tour, for talking to us all about hellebores. Please subscribe, hit that like button uh, if you'd like to see more content like this, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. And I will see you in the next video.